On the channel, I do like to sometimes delve into cases that have happened very recently, and this is one that caught my attention for reasons that will soon become clear. On July the 26th, 2021, a tragic shooting occurred in California, in which two teenagers lost their lives. For some of my viewers who are regular watchers of TikTok, you may have heard of a young man named Anthony Barajas. Anthony was a 19-year-old famous TikToker who had almost 1 million followers. The name that you are possibly more familiar with is It's Anthony Michael, which was his username on the app. He posted videos of himself singing, doing various pranks on his family, and just general life videos. On the 4th of July that year, a party was held to celebrate the day. It's there where he met an 18-year-old named Riley Goodrich. Although not quite as popular on the app, Riley had a decent sized following with over 20,000 under the username Riley Goodrich. Riley attended the Grand Canyon University where she was studying marketing on a full scholarship. She was home for the summer visiting her parents. She was described as a nice easygoing young woman who was easy to get along with. The two of them hit it off at the party and wanted to get to know each other a little bit more. They had plenty of mutual friends, so when their friends would meet up, the two would chat and spend time together. They then decided that the time was right to have a proper date, just the two of them. Riley told her father that she had met someone. Her father was somewhat skeptical of Anthony, once she mentioned that he was a famous TikTok influencer. He rolled his eyes and was not in total agreement with her decision. On the 26th of July 2021, Riley eagerly curled her hair and began to get ready for her first date. Anthony had just been on holiday in Hawaii and was eager to impress the Goodrich family. He brought back with him a bag of souvenirs for the whole family, which he had brought with him when he came to pick up Riley for the date. Riley's father would later remark that it was the sweetest thing he had ever seen a 19 year old do, and remembered how Riley sat there with a huge grin on her face, seeing that her father was now finally accepting of Anthony. The two then set off for their date. Anthony had planned to take her to her favourite restaurant called Wood Ranch. The couple enjoyed some food and then made their way to the cinema. Anthony had gotten some tickets to watch a late night showing of the new Purge movie. The showing was at around 9.35pm in the Regal Edward Theatre. Riley had texted her mother a couple of times during the date just to let her know how things were going. At some point during the movie, she sent a text message telling her mother that the storyline was a little bit dull and silly. This would be the last message Riley would ever send. After the film had ended, the Regal Edward Cinema employees began cleaning the theatre, and inside, they discovered a truly haunting sight. Riley had been shot in the head, and Anthony had been shot in the eye. Tragically, Riley was pronounced dead on the scene, but Anthony was still alive and desperately grasping onto life. He was taken to the Riverside Community Hospital and placed on life support. The doctors found several projectiles in his brain, and the police found three bullet casings and one projectile in the theatre. An investigation was soon underway to find out exactly what happened, but it wouldn't take too long before the police found exactly who they were looking for. Only six tickets were purchased for the 9.35pm showing of the Purge movie, including the tickets bought by Anthony and Riley. The police were able to track down who else had bought the tickets for the showing of the movie, as when the tickets were purchased, names and addresses had to be entered, and an anonymous tip was given to the police that would lead them to a 20-year-old man named Joseph Jimenez. Joseph was there that night to watch the movie with three other friends. The three friends would later speak to the police and give their accounts of what happened that night. They said that Joseph left during the middle of the movie and returned with a bag and claimed that he had a strap. His friends believed that he had just entered the theatre with a weapon. They also said 
that Joseph was mumbling and talking to himself, which made them feel extremely uncomfortable. So they came up with a plan so they could leave without raising his suspicion. They excused themselves and told Joseph that they needed to use the restroom. They got out and they did not return to the theatre. They left without raising their concerns to any of the staff at the theatre or contacting the police. Joseph was now alone in the theatre with Anthony and Riley. In a despicable and cowardly act, Joseph got out of his chair and went right behind where the two were sitting. He raised the gun at the unsuspecting teens and fired a total of three bullets. He shot Riley in the back of the head, killing her immediately. Upon hearing the gunshot, Anthony turned around. Joseph then fired a shot right through his eye. The sounds of the movie drowned out the sounds of the bullet, so none of the staff heard anything unusual. At around 11.28pm, two of the witnesses saw Joseph run out of the theatre and into his vehicle. He then quickly sped away. Just the day later, the police made their way to Joseph's house. Joseph had actually just called the Riverside Sheriff's Department and told them that he was worried that somebody was following him. He was indeed being followed. He was being followed by the law enforcement officials who were there to search his home. The police surrounded where he lived and there they saw Joseph yelling and brandishing a handgun. But thankfully, nobody else was injured. Joseph surrendered himself over to the police pretty quickly. The handgun that he was waving around at the police matched the caliber of weapon used in the shooting. He also had a movie ticket for the forever purge in his wallet, placing him at the scene of the crime. Joseph was arrested for the murder of Riley and the attempted murder of Anthony, but sadly, the charges were soon changed to two murder charges. Anthony fought hard following the horrific shooting, but passed away just a few days later. His injuries were too great. After passing away, his organs were donated to people in need, saving their lives. Joseph has blamed what happened on hearing voices in his head. He said that the voices had tormented him for over eight months, sometimes threatening to steal his car and television. But he also claimed that his voices could be a lot more sinister. That night, the voices had told him that his friends and family were going to be killed if he did not shoot the young couple in the theatre. However, he did not explain how killing the couple would save the people he claimed to care for. Joseph was diagnosed with schizophrenia eight months before the shooting, but had recently stopped taking his prescribed medication. He had run out and didn't bother to get some more. He told the investigators that the voices were so overwhelming that night that he couldn't even concentrate on the movie. So, he went into his car, grabbed a gun, shot the teenagers, and then sped away in his car and was arrested the following day. A special circumstances allegation of lying in wait was filed, which means to hide and wait for the right moment to make an attack. This special circumstance carries the death penalty. He is currently being held on a $2 million bail. As of now, there is no motive and it is considered to be an unprovoked attack. There is no indication that he knew either of the victims before he attacked them, and it is not thought that the fact they were both TikTok influencers played any role in the crime. In a statement that I can imagine didn't mean too much, Joseph offered his condolences to the families of the victims, saying, I wish I didn't do it. Something that does bother me about this case is that the friends who were with Joseph that night have faced no repercussions. No charges have been filed against them, even though they failed to notify the authorities after they feared that Joseph was capable of doing something dangerous, hence them leaving him behind. They knew that he was acting strange and even feared that he was in possession of a firearm. I guess they maybe didn't know what he was capable of, but they obviously knew enough to leave the theatre.
The theatre is now back open, and now, they do purse checks before people can go inside. Riley's father would now like to see metal detectors make their way into movie theatres, like there are at sports events, but the cost and practicality would make this nearly impossible. What makes this case so terribly tragic is the total senselessness of it all, coupled with the innocence of just two teenagers enjoying their first date together. It's truly a reminder of just how you never know when your life could be over, and just how fast it can all happen. I will do my best to give updates on the case in the future, and I will leave them pinned in the comments.